When I was in college, one of uh, I was an art major uh, and a biology major, but I really loved art and I really loved sculpture. So when we were doing one of these Celebration Express in Colorado Springs, we were just driving down the street and we looked over and we saw a yard full of kinetic sculptures, giant metal sculptures that moved in the wind and uh, just filling a yard. You, you know, you it's the kind of thing you think, Somebody must be crazy who lives there. But it was beautiful, and they were just immaculately made. And we stopped and talked to the guy, and it was his name was Star Kemp. He had been an, an artist his whole life, and he just found um, basically junk and welded it together, and they're just beautiful. Take a look at this, Star Kemp. This week, the Celebration Express brings you to the Rocky Mountains, where we'll visit with an artist who does some extraordinary work right in his own front yard. Celebration Express travels about 100,000 miles a year. Along the way, we see some pretty unusual things and meet some interesting people. But most of the time, these are planned encounters. But every once in a while, we happen onto something extraordinary, like these massive steel and aluminum wind sculptures at the foot of the Rocky Mountains. Artwork is usually found hanging on a wall or stuck on a pedestal inside a museum. But not this artwork. It's outside with the trees, the sky, and most importantly, the wind. These are giant mobiles, welded metal figures given life by the breeze. They are meticulously designed and constructed pieces of inspiration from the mind of an architect, engineer, welder, teacher, and artist, all rolled into one man, Tim. Starr comes from a family of blacksmiths and watchmakers. He started carving wood as a kid, worked his way up to stone, and eventually to steel and bronze. Before World War II, he worked at a coal mine and would save up junk metal and machine parts to build his monumental sculptures out in the hills. He got his materials from scrap piles and his inspiration from Mother Nature. Well, it's all out there in the mountains. I, uh, what, what I'm doing is uh, I study the rhythms of nature and then uh, attempt to uh, give my idea of it. It's all out there on the seashore in the mountains. Starr no longer has scrap piles from which to build his sculptures. He has to buy the raw materials. He doesn't sell the yard pieces because he says he would miss them too much. So he makes cast bronze sculptures which are sold to pay for the metal he needs. The bronzes are different from the garden figures. There seems to be more emotion in them. Art is full of harmony and beauty, but these forms remind us that life can be complicated and sometimes cruel. When you look at these, you wonder what Starr is trying to say in his art. There's obviously a lot going on here, but he reminds us that his intentions are not important. It doesn't matter what the shapes mean to him, but what they mean to us. The artist's object is to stimulate the imagination. It's not necessarily to dictate what a work of art says to someone when it is finished. Whatever uh, it recalls from the spectator's own past experience is the uh, important thing, as I see it. In other words, if you have a a hundred different people, or you will have one hundred different ideas of the same piece. It's not important, the, the artist's uh, uh, original idea of the piece, it's if he has stimulated the imagination of the spectator, he has won. That's the artist's job. Star Kemp tremendous amount of time and energy into his work. Each one of the yard sculptures takes up to a year to complete, and he has plans for several more pieces before his garden will be finished. He knows he could sell the sculptures for a lot of money, or he could charge admission to his yard like some amusement park. But he doesn't want people to have to pay to see his work. He likes folks to stop and look and wonder what in the world is going on here, just like we did. And when he's gone, the entire place, windmills, birds and all, will remain for whoever happens by. The fact is the whole thing will go to Park and Recreation of the city of Colorado Springs. It's all, they are going to make a, Extension Library Information Center of the, um, I don't know what all they have planned, but not just a museum. I told them, you can make, it, make it useful. I don't expect you to keep up a museum. I believe all the sculpture is to be left here. That's why I'm going to build the sculpture there in museum. Celebration Express has been a lot of places and experienced a lot along the way. It's not always easy being out on the road away from home, but people like Star Kemp make it all worthwhile. This is David Holt, out on the road with the Celebration Express.